Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my new video where we are going to be going over my top 5 tips I think every single Poppy player needs to know. Now, my goal behind this video is to make you a better League of Legends player as well as to give you a better understanding of Poppy as a whole. I'm going to put timestamps at every single point in the video. They're going to be up at the top of the page because I heavily value you guys' time. I want to make sure that you are getting the most out of this video as possible. If you want to contact me directly with any questions, I'm going to put a pinned comment down below with a link to my Discord if you want to um, ask me about any builds or just get it something like an OPG review. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Out. I'm a little bit limited with this format, only doing five tips. So if you're an experienced Poppy player as well, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down below. And with all that out of the way, let's jump right into the video. All right, getting to tip number one, we are going to go over a couple of core concepts that are important to understand when you're playing Poppy. First of all, you need to understand where her tankiness comes from. Getting additional resistances coming out of her W, as well as a nice shield coming out of her passive when you pick up her buckler. This means that she is quite susceptible to true damage because her base HP is only at 540. At level one, she has a very lo low base HP for a tank. For scale, Trindamir has about 100 more base HP at level one and Twitch has about 70 or 80 more base HP. So you are very susceptible to both Ignite lanes as well as kits that have true damage like Camille, Fiora, and Darius. The next thing I wanna talk about is the E and how you can look to utilize it with the flash. You always wanna insert the E command before flashing in just so it's instantaneous when you are flashing in. The last thing you would wanna do is do a flash in and then put input your E command and this is just going to give them a little bit more time to react to it and possibly flash out um, to that situation. So again, just insert the E command before flashing and it will automatically do it as soon as your flash is uh, triggered. The next thing I wanna talk about when you are playing Poppy, is just a really nice basic combo that you can look to utilize when playing Poppy. We can start it off with the E flash, auto Q, auto R, auto, and then we can look to W if they are trying to escape with some sort of mobility. What we are doing with the E and the R there is that we are ensuring that both instances of the hammer shock damage is coming down and we are getting the maximum amount of burst and lockdown on the enemy target while weaving in autos, getting grass procs and procking our iron ambassador and just really taking one enemy out of the game. And that will wrap up tip number one. All right, and getting into tip number two, we're gonna talk about her strengths and where you should look to utilize and really play out as much the game as possible. Whenever you are surrounded by a lot of walls, inherently, Poppy is a lot stronger. If you take a fight, maybe right here in the center of the lane where it's gonna be a lot harder to get an E smash against a wall, you are going to be a bit weaker because it is removing a stun from your kit as well as the additional damage proc coming out of the second part of your E. So whenever you're playing Poppy, always look for skirmishes inside of the jungle. So what this means is you should be getting sweepers and control wards just to make sure that your jungle fighting is all the better and you can just burst people out um, from fog of war if they maybe you are waiting for a jungle or to start a, um, a blue buff and you can really punish them when they are near a wall. And if you play the fun kind of lethality build, you can do some pretty disgusting things um, with Prowler's Claw by um, e-stunning targets from a very, very um, long range away, getting in a at, at unexpected angles. I know this is kind of a troll build, but it is uh, quite fun and Prowler's Claw has a lot of utility um, with Poppy and then Lethality does a huge amount of damage uh, when you're playing Poppy. By no means is it optimal, but you have to at least try it out once if you like uh, Poppy and that'll wrap up tip number two. All right, and getting into the next tip, we are gonna talk about how to fully use your R to the maximum amount of potential that it has you can use it in several different ways first of all it is absolutely amazing with things like samira and with yasuo that really like when enemies are knocked up um, as they are no longer made untargetable like they used to be when they are knocked up on a snap type of um, cast on this ultimate. It is also a great tool when there are multiple targets that are all clumped up, particularly when there's a bunch of melee champions. Just doing a snap cast of your R is going to be very, very effective. The next next thing that you can look to utilize when you're playing Poppy in team fights is obviously you want to be looking to knock out as many targets as possible and then focus on the ones that are left. Now, an important thing to understand here is you will get the maximum amount of damage done as soon as the arrow goes a little bit out of this base circle at the start, you do not have to fully charge it up to get the maximum amount of damage. As you can see here, we're gonna do a full wind up and that did about 564. And now we are gonna just do a little bit more than a snap cast right there and it did 564 as well. So you do not have to fully charge up and give them more time to dodge out of your ultimate. All you have to do is wait for it to get right outside of that circle and it is going to do the maximum amount of damage on the target when you're playing Poppy. And that will wrap up this tip. 
All right, and getting into the next tip, we're gonna talk about the disgusting amount of turnaround potential on Poppy and a very useful tip for taking optimal trades against targets. So when Poppy is fighting, particularly melee champions, she can punish them quite heavily when she is getting chased by the enemy targets. And sometimes just running away from targets can make them think that, hey, I, I win this 1v1, I should chase him down and try and kill him. So how you punish these things when you are getting chased by enemies is by just simply throwing out a Q in the straight line between you and the target. And one of two things is gonna happen. Either they are going to run away, which is completely fine, or that they are going to chase further into you, which is going to allow for your second proc of the hammer shock to go off on the enemy target. And that is gonna slow them. And then you can look to turn around with your E and get your um, buckler charge and if you aren't winning the trade you can use your steadfast presence and run away or you can use your ultimate to knock them away but you can always look for these really really nice traps where you bait them into a trade this is particularly important when maybe you're just playing poppy up in the top lane and you are just looking to auto them um just do a really quick auto trade Running backwards and queuing them is going to be a very effective way to end the trade because either they're going to over chase into you and get hit by the second part of your queue and you're going to be able to get away anyways because you are going to slow them on that queue. It is just going to be a great way to get a lot of extra damage on the enemy target and that will wrap up this tip for Poppy. All right, and getting into the final tip, a very, very strong part of Poppy's kit, particularly when you are in the laning phase, whether you're a jungler or a top laner, setting up tower dives is gonna be absolutely huge because you are one of the premier top lane divers that you can even pull off dives on enemy targets when just by yourself when they are low base HP. So how you wanna look to set up these dives is you want to slow push a lane where you get as many minions um, with you as possible and then you try and dive the enemy target and make them miss as much CS as possible. You should always be looking for these circumstances where you can deny EXP and gold from the enemy target. So whenever you're a jungler and you see something like uh, a Nasus that's super, super resource reliant up in the top lane, you should be looking for tower dives on the enemy targets. It's gonna be very, very easy as we talked about. And the other tip, inserting your E command into the flash is gonna give them a very minimal time um, to react to your stun. And generally, particularly in lower elos, no matter what, when you are um, kind of circling the enemy targets, they're gonna hug the tower. They're very rarely gonna be um, making it hard for you to E dash in and get a wall stun on them so consistently look for those tower dives make sure that you're using the shield from your passive that's going to eat up about one tower shot and then using the w afterwards to make sure that you can get out and then stop the mobility after you've stunned uh, the target and that stun time is up is going to be just a great way um, to punish the enemy target so again look for as many tower dives as possible when you are playing poppy because she is a master at that getting that cc with her stun setting up the lee sing q or the nidalee q or setting up the top lane if you're a jungler to really burst out the enemy target is going to be a great way to get snowballing and get ahead on poppy and that will wrap up my final tip guys if you have any questions uh for me about poppy you can hit me up in the comments down below and as always take it easy